So now in this video, we're going to do a step-by-step -step build of the 555 timer. This is an NE555, wired in monostable mode, or you might call it one shot, because we hit the button once, we get a timed high output, and then it goes back to low and stays low. That's why it's monostable, it's stable in one condition, the low stable. We do something to disrupt that stability, and then it goes back to that. So any case we have to power it let's do those pins first and so this one's going to the top pin pin number one that's ground our zero volt reference point pin number eight here there's a little divot up here so it's one two three four then you jump across five six seven eight pin number eight goes to the positive side of the power supply power supply is off right now and so that's how it powers all the things it needs to do plus there's three resistors in there equal value resistors and you tap into in between two of them you get one third of the power supply voltage there and two thirds of the power supply voltage over there this circuit uses half or uses one of those so we have a switch up here to give a low signal to pin number two we're gonna add a little bit more to pin number two so that's the second pin down and then pin number four here that is the reset pin so we don't want the reset pin to do anything so we don't want to leave it floating we want to connect it directly to the positive rail that will keep it from doing anything if we give it a low signal close to the uh, negative rail I don't think it has to be terribly close either I think it's really easy to accidentally uh, reset that so just going directly to the positive rail it will keep five volts on there no matter what and uh, that's what we want that will prevent it from doing anything if you reset it that overpowers anything else the integrated circuits doing and then there's this little jumper here that goes from a uh, pin six here the threshold pin to pin seven there the discharge pin so now the two pins are one conductive area there and then pin number five here is a control pin you can add a little capacitor for uh, stability or whatnot but uh, I'm not going to worry about that. This circuit will work just fine without it. So, in any case, let's get to the rest of the build. There's only a few components to add. It's not too bad. So, we need to give a low signal to the trigger pin here to get it to set the output high. And we need to make sure that we don't get any false triggering, kind of like we talked about down here. So, we're going to take a resistor, this is a 10 kilo ohm resistor, and plug it to the positive rail also to pin number two. So now the power is off. When we hit the switch, when we don't hit the switch, we have a connection to the positive rail. It will be five volts at that point. The switch is open, nothing flows that way. And when we close the switch, then current will flow through the resistor, through that jumper, and then to the negative rail when you talk about conventional current. So we want to briefly press that. It sets the trigger low, zero volts, for as long as we hold the button. So we just want to press it and let go. So now what that does is it starts charging a, or discharges a capacitor instantly, and then it starts charging. So to charge the capacitor, we're going to take a 100,000, you can see that it's orange right there, 100,000 ohm resistor. And that is going to set the charge time for a given capacitance. So a lower value capa uh, resistor here will charge a given capacitor faster. A higher value resistor will charge it slower. That's one of the ways you can set the time. So we're going to use a 10 microfarad capacitor. And uh, see if I can zoom in and see the No, that's as far as I can zoom in. Before it will go blurry. There we go. So, this is a 10 microfarad. There you can see 50 volts and below it 10. There's mu. It kind of looks like a U and F. 10 microfarad. So, 10 millionths of a farad. So, this is polarized. The short lead we're going to put directly to the negative rail. And then the long lead, the positive side of the capacitor, we're going to put to that jumper. So, it connects directly to that resistor there. And then uh, negative side there, there's a dash on there. You may be able to see. So, in any case, for the output, this is just so we can see 
what it is doing. We're going to take a resistor to pin number three, the output pin. And then we're going to put it one row away from that jumper there. Right there, it's 220 ohm resistor. I'll turn it this way so you can see uh, red, red, black for red, red, black, black for two, two, zero, and then zero zeros after that. So, so 220 ohms. Then we're going to take an LED long lead, the anode. We're going to put to the resistor. Short lead, the cathode. We're going to go down to this jumper here so that it is set to light up when the output is more positive and uh, now let's uh, turn on the power I'll kind of move back we're all done wiring now we got the power on and nothing's happening we hit the switch and I don't know what that is probably about one and a half seconds or so and there's formulas out on the uh, if you do a Google search if you do like uh, monostable timing uh, calculator or something you'll find formulas to uh, calculate the uh, time that the output will be high but in any case if I hold the switch down it just stays high but if I let go then you can see it turns off instantly so I'm pretty sure as long as I let go before it is set to turn off I think it will turn off at the same time so it only stay on it looks like if I'm still holding it by the time the uh, timing is done. So what's happening is right now the capacitor is charged. It's going to be fully charged by now. It's directly connected to the resistor which comes through the positive rail. So for 10 microfarads of capacitance a 100,000 ohm resistor looks like probably about a second and a half takes it to fully charge around that time and then when we press the switch it instantly discharges that's why it's called the discharge pin pin 7 there brings it directly to ground and discharges it instantly and then uh, once it discharges then the resistor starts charging the capacitor again so in any case hopefully that all made sense this is one of the basic 555 timer uh, circuits and when you learn this one and the other two you have a pretty good grasp of uh, all the things you can do with the 555 timer. You just got to get more creative on how other circuitry reacts to what it is doing. And uh, so hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.